May I ask, Mr. Clement, about the scope of your argument? Because sometimes, as you just responded to Justice Thomas's question, you're focused very specifically on the constitutional claims at issue in this case. And in particular, the Thunder Basin analysis lends itself to that kind of focus. You have other arguments in your brief the, you know, sometimes you call them the plain text arguments or um, uh, just about the way 1331 and the review provisions interact, which would seem to go much further, would seem to sweep in not just constitutional claims but statutory claims, and would seem to sweep in many preliminary rulings, uh, you know, like, real, you know, truly, truly interlocutory rulings of the, you know, it might be evidentiary rulings, it might be discovery rulings. So some of those statutory arguments would seem to extend way beyond the, um, the uh, constitutional claims at issue here. So which are you really arguing? So, Justice Kagan, I'm really arguing to win this case on the Thunder Basin factors. That seems to be the straightforward way to win the case. If, if I could just say a moment about the broader arguments, I think if you look at the statutes, if the court were drawing on a clean slate, I would probably say the right way to decide these cases is, of course, there's jurisdiction, and there's a whole host of non-jurisdictional doctrines like ripeness and exhaustion that would probably get you to almost the exact same result as the Thunder Basin factors. So if I were a law professor, I might quibble that these factors that the court has come up with for jurisdiction really should go to non-jurisdictional factors and these cases should be resolved on B6 rather than B1. But I'm not a law professor. I'm here to represent a client and I think our client wins well under the Thunder Basin factors. So we're happy to win on, on those factors. Counsel.